Welcome back to Super Recaps. Today, I'm going to describe About Time, a comedy, drama, and fantasy picture but before that make sure to subscribe and like the video and make sure to click the bell icon to get new video updates. Watch out for spoilers ahead. Here's a recap of what happens in the story. At their seaside home, the Lake family lives in peace. There's Mary, the always busy mother, James, the always busy father, Desmond, the attractive but absent-minded uncle, Tim, the awkward son, and Catherine, or Kitcott, the free-spirited daughter. They throw a New Year's Eve party with family and friends every year. Tim navigates through the crowd at this year's party, feeling awkward and dragged around by his friend, Jay. During the New Year's Eve countdown, Polly, a female he's been dancing with, goes in for a kiss, but he shakes her hand instead, disappointing her. Tim wakes up the next day, overcome with embarrassment and a horrible hangover. He's summoned to his father's office. Tim's father, James, then informs him that he's about to reveal a secret to him that he's never told anybody else. According to James, the men born into their family, including Tim, have the ability to travel back in time, but only for the duration of their lives. They are unable to travel to a past or a location they have never visited. To do so, they must go to a dark spot, such as a huge cupboard, and imagine themselves in the place and time they desire, and they will appear there. Tim, predictably, believes this is a comedy. He shakes his head at his father, as though he thinks he's joking. Tim goes into the closet and thinks about the New Year's Eve party from the night before to establish that it isn't real. He emerges from the closet after a few moments, shocked to see himself dressed in the same clothing as yesterday. Downstairs, music, and chatter reverberate. He walks down the hall and is pushed back by Jay, avoiding a table that he had previously knocked down. He kisses Polly throughout the countdown, and she reacts giddily. Tim then returns to the present by going back into the closet. Realizing that time travel is possible, he listens to his father's account of the ability, learning that it explains why James seemed to have so much time for them. Tim resolves to use his gift to find love instead of using it for money or power, as James advises him. Kitcott asks Charlotte, her boyfriend's cousin, to stay at the beach house for two months that summer. Tim attempts to get on Charlotte's good side while the family sunbathes with their visitor one afternoon. Tim sees an opportunity and agrees to apply sunscreen on Charlotte's back, but the bottle spills on her. Humiliated, he flies back in time, and behaves more casually and methodically about it this time. Tim tries to impress Charlotte throughout the summer but fails every time until it's too late. Finally, Charlotte's last day in the house arrives. Tim plans to reveal his emotions to Charlotte the night before she leaves, but he is shot down before he can, realizing that Kitcott had already told Charlotte that he might do so. Charlotte wonders if things might have turned out differently if he had talked to her before her last night at their house. He gets an idea from this. Tim travels back in time, in the middle of summer, to confess to Charlotte. Charlotte, on the other hand, advises him to ask her again on their last night together. This proves that no matter what, he would never have a shot with Charlotte. Tim finally abandons his pursuit of her. Tim leaves their home the day after Charlotte leaves and moves to London, where he resides with James' friend Harry. Tim is looking forward to the next chapter of his life, but he is saddened to hear that Harry is a dramatist with a short fuse. Tim hasn't had much luck with romance in the first six months, discovering that his job as a lawyer acquaints him mostly with other men. When Jay takes him to Dan's L. E. Noir, a restaurant where guests dine in complete darkness, his luck changes. They're seated next to a woman named Mary and her friend named Joanna. Tim and Mary get to know one another and have a good time in the dark. Tim and Jay eventually get to meet the girls after dinner. Tim is taken aback when he sees Mary, and it's clear that sparks fly as soon as they see each other. Before leaving, she gives him her phone number. Tim returns home with a skip in his step, only to be met with Harry's enraged growl. His play's opening was ruined when the main actor forgot his lines. Tim goes back in time to join Harry in the theater right before opening night, wanting to make things better. He approaches Tom, the star actor, and persuades him to rehearse his lines. This works for a while, but then another performer forgets his lines. Tim travels back in time to assist him once more. The play is a resounding success. When Tim checks his phone, however, he notices that Mary's number has vanished. His time trips had obliterated his romantic evening with Mary. Tim, upset, joins an overjoyed Harry for breakfast the next day. Tim discovers an ad for a Kate Moss exhibition in the city, which Harry shares with him. He spends the week visiting the show, expecting to run across Mary, who is a big fan of Kate Moss. Mary finally walks in after a week, and Tim hesitantly approaches her. However, their interaction is not pleasant, and he discovers that Mary has a boyfriend named Rupert. Tim discovers Mary and Rupert met at Joanna's party. He discovers the specifics of the party and travels back in time to prevent it from taking place. Before Rupert arrives, Tim comes to Joanna's apartment and persuades Mary to leave the party with him. Mary is cautious at first, but after a while, she is drawn to him. As they walk away, they pass Rupert, who unwittingly passed past his alleged future girlfriend. 
Meanwhile, the two enjoy a delicious supper together, during which they get to know one other even better. Mary invites Tim up to her apartment after he walks her home. They take the date to the bedroom as the mood heats up. However, Tim has an unpleasant first sexual encounter with Mary after stumbling over her shoes and having problems unclipping her bra. He resolves to travel back in time, skipping over Mary's shoes and hastily undressing her. Everything goes well this time, but Tim knows he can do better. The couple spends the perfect first night of passion after Tim's many tries. Their relationship blossoms in the months that follow, and the couple finally moves in together. Tim meets Charlotte while at the theater with a co-worker named Rory, but the conversation immediately becomes awkward. He tries again, but this time it doesn't work out. He decides not to approach her for the third time, and Charlotte instead notices him and initiates the conversation. Charlotte asks him for dinner and expresses her guilt for previously rejecting him. Charlotte urges him to accompany her to her apartment and tempts him to accompany her inside, but Tim declines. Tim realizes how much he loved Mary after being able to reject his first love. He returns home and awakens her in order to propose to her. It doesn't turn out to be as romantic as he had hoped, so he tries again. She agrees the second time. Tim takes Mary home to meet his parents that summer. Mary gets along with her mother, and Tim spends time with his father. Kitcott, who had a bad experience in London, has also returned home, much to his surprise. When Tim and Mary's wedding and Mary's pregnancy are announced, the Lake family is overjoyed. Despite the fact that it rained during the ceremony and reception, their wedding ceremony is packed with passion and humor. The wind has destroyed and blown the tent, forcing everyone to seek shelter in the house. When Rory, Harry, and Jay screw up their speeches, Tim goes back in time and replaces his best man until he ultimately chooses his father. Mary gives birth to their daughter, Posey, a few months later. Tim is enthralled by the experience of raising a child, both for the joys and the challenges. Posey's first birthday approaches as they move into a new home. All of the guests arrive, but Kitcott is late. When the doorbell rings, Tim answers it, but it's Kitcott's troubled boyfriend, Jimmy. He and Kitcott had a fight earlier in the day, and Kitcott ended up driving alone. Kitcott had been drinking earlier in the day, which caused her car to wreck on the way to Tim's house. Tim goes back in time, hoping to save her, he picks her up from her house this time. However, this does not solve the issue. Kitcott has a drinking problem as a result of her dissatisfied relationship with Jimmy. Tim speaks with his sister in the hopes of reaching out to her. When that fails, he takes Kitcott back in time to the New Year's Eve party where she met Jimmy. Instead of flirting with Jimmy, she takes out her frustrations on him and punches him, despite the fact that he doesn't remember her in this version. When the siblings return to the present, Kitcott finds she has feelings for Jay. This time, she dates Jay instead of Jimmy, and their relationship turns out to be much better. Tim returns home after saving his sister's life and happiness, only to discover that he has a son instead of his daughter, Posey. He is shocked and saddened as he realizes what he's done. He immediately walks into a cupboard and travels back in time to the birth of his son in order to speak with James. James agrees that any changes he makes before his child is born will almost certainly result in the conception of a different child. He can't undo anything that happened before Posey was born if he wants to keep her. Tim goes back in time to undo the changes he made to Kitcott's life and allows her car accident to happen, unable to bear losing the daughter he knew. Tim and Mary stay by Kitcott's side in the hospital until she heals. Kitcott is inspired by their encouragement to make positive changes in her life. Tim advises that Kitcott start seeing Jay. Tim is overjoyed to see his daughter when he returns home from the hospital. Their joy motivates him to conceive a second child. They have their kid two years later, despite Mary's protests initially. Tim assists Mary in preparing for a meeting with her company's best-selling author one evening, but they leave Posey downstairs, where she destroys the manuscript from Mary's office. Tim intends to utilize time travel to solve the problem, but their night is cut short when his mother calls to inform him that James has been diagnosed with terminal cancer. Tim, Mary, and Kitcott pay a visit to Tim's father's beach cottage. Their time travel will not be able to cure his cancer without jeopardizing Tim and Kitcott's lives. In the end, time travel will not be able to solve all of life's problem. James teaches Tim a lesson that he believes is considerably more crucial for their potential. The first is to go about life as normally as possible, with all of the stresses and problems that come with it. Second, after seeing the day for the first time, he should go back and recall memories from his life, focusing on how beautiful the world may be. Tim takes his advice and finds joy in both the ordinary and extraordinary times of his life. However, other days, such as the day his father died, he does not wish to relieve. Tim flies back in time to see his father while he is still alive, as he is unable to say goodbye. Tim feels reassured by the fact that he can still visit his father in the past whenever he misses him after James' death. Mary, on the other hand, decides that she wants a third child one day. Tim pauses, aware that having a third kid will prevent him from seeing his father. After considerable deliberation, he decides to let go of the past and go forward with his life. 
After that, he agrees to have another kid. Mary is pregnant and due to give birth in a few months. This is Tim's last chance to see his father in the past. He travels back in time to play one more game of table tennis with his father. James believes it's their last time together when he notices the sadness in Tim's eyes. He accepts this and expresses his support for his son's decision. They both go back in time to when Tim was a young boy as a pleasure. James and Tim run and play along the beach one last time, now that they are in better condition and have more energy. Tim bids his father farewell and returns to the current day, where his third kid is born. Years pass, and Tim goes about his daily routine, laughing and crying with his family. With Mary, he has completed his family, and Kit Cot has given birth to her kid with Jay. He lets Mary sleep in one morning and makes breakfast for his children, savoring their presence. Tim resolves to never time travel again, preferring to live each day as if it were the second time he lived it. This time, he concentrates on appreciating life in all of its forms, from major events to minor things. Thanks for watching.